Hello there, you filthy fiends, and welcome back to the F123 Last to First Championship. Today, we head to the Mexican Grand Prix, and as you can see, this is not the conventional screen. In short, I'm a pillock, I lost qualifying footage. I just I don't ask. But let me give you a brief rundown of what happened in qualifying. So, Logan Sargent out on a lap, feeling uh, feeling very cocky and confident after his P2 last time out. In fact, one man wasn't very happy. Sergio was just driving around just behind him and said, um, soy crash. And when he saw the American dream, well, there was only one conclusion, I'm afraid. Yes, I too thought that was a bit extreme. But that's not what Perez said, because he said, I crash. And Checo's combustible tactics only mean one thing. We're last. Checo didn't see past turn one on Sunday. Let's go for position one today. Five lights. Lights out and away we go at the Mexican Grand Prix. The crowd at our mercy and bellowing in our ears. And we're using that momentum already. Sergeant in the second phase dropping anchor. And we sail our way through. But such a long run down to turn one. So we say the outside line looks tasty. So we take a big nosh of that. Round the outside of a bunch of cars. P15 already, could be even higher here, as we have an Alfa Romeo of Bottas who gets compromised, and we sweep through into P14, with Sonoda and Gasly side by side ahead of us, we say hello braking zone, bit of a slide on the way in for some style points, we Tokyo drift our way round past Sonoda, and Gasly's been sent to the shops, round the outside we go, we've reimbursed our start handsomely, up into P12, Zhou Guan Yu, round the outside as well, some bangers with that mash, fantastic start to this race, and on lap one, we're almost in the points already, next target Oscar Piastri for what will already be a single point to Sergio's name, and they're fighting furiously up ahead, it means Piastri also gets done, and Ocon could be done, but we don't go for it. We don't go for it. But already up into the points at the Hello, end of lap number. Oh, God! Massive send on Esteban Ocon. Out of nowhere. The Mexican crowd love that one. And they're shouting, Vamos for more. Five red lights, though. A replay of the start. Sainz actually got pole position. But immediately, Ferrari are disappointing. Sainz already down to fifth. Now, nay, make that sixth place. Sainz has a shocking start to this race. Russell is actually the one challenging the Red Bull of Verstappen. Down into turn number one. It's three wide behind them. But Russell briefly takes the lead of the Grand Prix. Softs on pretty much everyone except us on this grid lineup. Verstappen, though, with a superior exit. Trying to get back past George Russell. The outside line can be quite tasty if you get your braking right. Still side by side between those two. But Verstappen will get the superior momentum. But Hamilton claims P3. Marvellous start for Mercedes then, but the rampant Red Bull is nowhere near done. We're sharpening our horns for even more of an impaling of our opposition. And what, uh, so Stroll's in the points. Well, that's not realistic. He's shit. Swipes like what Stroll does on a racetrack only belong on Tinder, as DRS is enabled on this lap. So he might not have swiped right on us, but with our flap wide open, he's going to start getting very scared indeed. In fact, he better get scared now. Alonso, his teammates on the move, was behind Slant Stroll, the Canadian, and actually makes contact. Stroll immediately providing us with skill issues. And those two fighting away furiously means we get the superior cut back at the end of the next corner. Three wide into the left-hander, but surely we'll get this done. Stroll ahead of Alonso, we're ahead of Alonso, and now we have the other Aston Martin to dispatch of. Inside line is ours, and that's it! P7 to our name, the Mexican Minister of Marvel and Magistry. That, that doesn't... It, what? Checo's taking me to court, apparently, which it was not part of the script. What also wasn't part of the script, you can see that gap to Stroll was eight tenths of a second at the beginning of the straight. Oh, wait, make that four tenths. Nay, three tenths of a second. Half a second in a single straight. I didn't give you permission to be on my rear. Uh, shove off. Anyways, threat dealt with, and now we continue on our merry way onto the next sets of corners. Stroll and Co. nowhere near close enough to provide any kind of challenge. And actually, on this lap, as we are speaking... 
well, Sainz is beginning to have problems with his car. He's on the back of this soft tyre train here on lap number five, but he's soon going to drop off the back of them and actually could back Leclerc into us, but still our straight line speed is what's hampering us. We lose so much time to Charles Leclerc. He himself is absolutely coming over to rinse the Riz Master Carlos Sainz, who's the only thing he's rizzing is a... Uh, Crude oil. That Carlos Sainz is a slippery man, okay? That's that's really all you need to know. Let's be on to the end of lap number five. Actually, we're very close to DRS here, and we might just have got it. And if we get it on this lap, there's every chance that come the next few corners, we could do the... Uh, oh my god, never mind. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz fighting hammer and nail side by side. And that brings us firmly into play here. Leclerc gets past his ailing teammate on the second of the two DRS straights at the beginning of the lap. And now we are next in line to nosh up our prey. Gobble him up like a hungry turkey as we switch back on the Ferrari man. There's every chance we go down the inside. We do go down the inside. Lovely little move on Carlos Sainz. We dispatch the Ferrari man nice and quickly so we don't waste any time on getting past him. Meanwhile, here we are. And what the hell's Gasly doing? That's a horrible line. And that can only mean one thing. Oh, no. The Alpine driver, who's been so incredibly consistent, has a mechanical problem. He'll take no further part in this siesta. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Perez party is only just beginning. So, strap yourselves in, buy yourself a ticket, and upgrade to first class while you're at it. Because we have a golden avenue towards these front positions. The first target is Charles Leclerc. And we passed the smooth operator earlier. And we're going to take his name in our stride as we sail around the outside of Charles Leclerc. Lovely little move. And that will mean there are no problems at all as we head on to the second... And that was more slippery than my Friday night. Luckily, though, as we assess the threat from behind, Leclerc not close enough to provide any kind of resistance to our aggressive attacks. And so up into P5 we go now already in this race. Fantastic stuff. And the news is only going to get better for us because the two Mercedes are fighting away. Russell might have had the superior start, but Hamilton has found some great pace where he needs it most and easily gets past his teammate. Round the outside into turn number one here on lap seven. And Hamilton has sued his way round his teammate. Great stuff there. Meanwhile, we're only just beginning to find our feet in this race. Believe it or not, lap number eight, not even halfway through this race. We actually spent a couple of laps behind Norris at this point. And we're still trying to find a way past. Bottoming out through that curve and sliding about was not on the agenda whatsoever. And once again, it's mistakes like that which we can't afford. Yes, I, I will admit, I haven't done this track in about six millennia. But even so, it's not an excuse. The least you can expect of the driver is not to bottom out over those curbs, to line himself up, give himself that slingshot exit and the prime opportunity to make the move. So here we are again, the fulcrum point of this race, lap number nine already. And we are rapidly chasing and hunting down Lando Boris. As we have DRS wide open, our flap is engaged and into the right-hander. We're as close as we've ever been here. Potential for a move into the hairpin. Yes, we do. Lovely little move there. An absolute first-class send. Gold standard. Our teammate pits at the end of this lap. We'll happily take that invitation from our team at the end of the next lap. As you can see, lap number 10 now. Chasing down Hamilton. We could do it, but into the pits. Here we are, lap number 10. We actually caught up massively. Optimal turn in. Ronaldo's deafened me again. And onto the soft tyres we go. But no! Oh dear! Held up by Charles Leclerc. That was not part of the script. We didn't quite have the optimal gap. And it's more time that we can't afford to lose to Verstappen if we want to win this race. So, another dimension has been added then. Russell, by the way, with that undercut breezes past Hamilton and it's imperative here that we stay ahead of Norris look how quickly he's charging up like a Saturn V rocket as we try and hold it down the inside Norris has really put the sword to us here he's whipped out Excalibur no no we'd not allow that that violates the terms of service stay away Lando the threat from Lando is curtailed as we head into the left-hander 
And now, on these new soft tyres versus mediums, well, now we cook. First up then, Sir Lewis Hamilton got second place in this real life event, but we're gonna prize a podium position away from him. The Mexican crowd would adore this. Perez, who started last after the horrendous qualifying session, that really wasn't his fault whatsoever, based on what you heard. But look how close we are to absolutely harrying Hamilton. Absolutely flying there. And we're going to casserole him like a pork loin. Sites somehow with the fastest lap of the race. But DRS wide open. It's not even close. We understood the assignment. Completed it. Checked it. Re-examined it. And absolutely sent in a first A-class effort. Straight round and into the podium positions we go. Sergio Perez unbelievably with the bit between his teeth. After what happened in real life, we have a score to settle here at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez. And we are... Uh, ignore, just ignore. We're staying on board for this entire lap then as we reel in Russell like a catfish. We will catfish him into... Uh, that's not my breast phrase, I'll be honest. Through this sweeping section, and unlike real life, you can almost go full throttle through there somehow with a bit of weird Codemasters juju, which... It's very common, unfortunately. We managed to get right up to Russell, and I smell blood in the water. I smell a harpooning opportunity down the inside, and that is P2. Incredible progress made, and with just a few laps to go, five laps to go, we're up to P2, and the chase could now begin for Verstappen. The fastest lap is ours as well. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to feel a bit smug here, feeling a little bit confident in my own abilities. Meanwhile, it's the Mercedes battle I'm actually watching behind as Hamilton's going for the move on George Russell and actually could get it done here. Still side by side through the first section, losing a chunk of time. They're going to surely put themselves into the cars behind, but Hamilton actually could get past Russell hit. No, no, he doesn't. No. That battle was so done so long before. Why do I bother? Here's someone who's actually on the move, though, at the end of lap number 14. One Oscar Pastry. As he's chasing down Lance Stroll, DRS wide open. Alonso's outside of the points currently, so I have no idea what's happened there. But DRS wide open on the McLaren. The inside liners are calling, and Piastri accepts that invitation. Down the inside he goes, and it's an easy move for the McLaren man. And with the second helping of DRS, he will defend that P8 for a little while longer. Here we are though, near the last lap of the Grand Prix and Hamilton actually did get past Russell, but he's got one more chance here. One massive DRS straight where he has to defend for at least his second, his second podium of the season. He's hardly had a whiff of the podium. The only time he has... Russell trying to go for the outside, but the gap closes. Russell doesn't go for it. And Hamilton could well have this in his back pocket. He has Russell in his back pocket, if you know what I'm saying. Down the second straight, though, another helping of DRS for his teammate. But look how far back he is. And Hamilton is going to keep P3, surely. No mistakes made. Yes, clinical as ever. Hamilton could well get a podium in this race. His second of the season. He's been looking at one for such a long time. And as for Russell, I've seen more aggressive wood lice than that man. Meanwhile, here we are, last lap of the Grand Prix. Oh. Oh, what's that? You thought we were going to catch Verstappen? <laughs> Have you tried driving an ice skate? Travelling through the stadium section for the final time. The fireworks begin. The celebrations commence. And all I've got to say is this track is absolute horse crap. Honestly, driving it, it's like driving on sand. Anyway, though, Verstappen will take the win. But it is redemption for one man. We cross the line. P2 here at the Mexican Grand Prix. It's a massive redemption on real life, Sergio Perez has... Oh! Oh no! We thrust up the posterior of Max Verstappen, but we do claim driver of the day for that absolutely peerless penetration. The thin air makes this event a brutal one for these Formula One cars, but this team have done a fantastic job to make it to the checker flag and take a well-earned victory today. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field.
Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Okay, I apologise. That last bit of commentary was actually vulgar. It's that man again, though. Max Verstappen once again lifts the trophy up. He shoulder presses it up to the sky. It only weighs 500 grams, though, so that's not impressive. I benched them for breakfast in my sleep. Anyway, credit to Lewis Hamilton. Finally gets another podium in this season. Just the momentum he needs as we head over to the final few races of the season. Perez with that great result actually bodes very well for him. Fastest lap to his name as well in the end or to our name. So <laughs> well done me. But in terms of the Drivers Championship, which we'll look at in a bit, we actually will increase our advantage and get even closer to securing P2 ahead of that man in seventh place. Charles Leclerc, what on earth happened to him? Didn't have any problems in his car. It's just it's just, it's just absolute skill issues, really. Anyways, everywhere else, though, Mercedes in their constructors' charge. P3 and 4 is exactly the result they would have needed. As for everywhere else, Lando Norris, sixth place. Aston Martin's hold on their constructors' position is getting ever more precarious. As Oscar Piastri also gets in the points. Finally, a double score for McLaren. So good on them. Alpha Tauri, much unlike real life, no pace whatsoever. Hulkenberg had a stinker of a race. I have no idea why he's ended up masquerading behind Logan Sargent. Because you have to be pretty bad to do that. Some much needed joy and jubilation has been brought to the Mexican people today, though. A great drive from us. Let's try and keep that up as we head to the Brazilian Grand Prix. Before we head to the second home of Sir Lewis Hamilton, though, let's take a quick look at the Drivers' Championship standings. Max Verstappen, 11 wins, same car number as his teammate, unparalleled success, though. 411 points, and now complete with a trophy next to his name to assert his dominance. Perez, like I said, increases that advantage over Charles Leclerc. 18 points separate them now in their battle for second place with just three races to go. Sainz has got, well, George Russell only three points behind him now, but Hamilton, another good result, and he is well in the hunt for P4 in the driver's standings. Alonso with a no score today, by the way. That was shocking from him. Even his teammate could get in the points, and well, he's washed. Anyways, not much else to say, though, really. Oscar Piastri gets ahead of Stroll in the standings. Only one point between them, though. Gasly's run of scoring ends, but Ocon's run now begins again. One solitary point scored. Everywhere else, though, things remain as it was before. In the constructor standings, Red Bull's lead is, well, it's unassailable. I'm pretty confident it's unassailable, so... Ooh, Red Bull won the constructors again. Who expected that? The battle for second is still on, though, with three races to go. Not much separating Mercedes and Ferrari. Just 64 points. And if things go Mercedes' way, then, well, Ferrari's second place could well be in jeopardy. Meanwhile, McLaren only 18 points off Aston Martin now. Like I said, getting ever more precarious by the minute. McLaren are not sitting around for one second. They're going to put them under as much pressure as possible. That wasn't English. I don't really care. Alpine have all but secured sixth in the standings. I'm confident about that. But the battle between Ferrari and Mercedes is the one I am anticipating the most. Who knows what will happen? The real question, though. Will Max Verstappen win at the Brazilian Grand Prix? Well, you'll just have to wait and see. Thank you very much for watching round number 20 of the F1 23 Last to First Championship. Only three rounds to go in this series. And my God, I can't wait to see what it brings. If you did enjoy this video, please leave it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. The support on the channel has been insane recently. There's no words that can express my gratitude. So thank you so much. But still, a massive amount of you haven't subscribed, and I'm enraged. But if you subscribe, I will curb my rage just a tiny bit. Just a smidgen. Will Max Verstappen win in Brazil? Yeah. But that's for you to find out. Until that episode, though, or whatever may be next, I once again thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, I'll see you soon.